In the days when the Blessed Prophet was living in Medina, there were still many tribes scattered around the Arabian Peninsula who had not yet accepted that there is but one God and Muhammad is his messenger. They were angry and jealous of Muhammad and the companions and hoped that they could rid themselves of this man who had destroyed the people's belief in many different gods. As long as these tribes were constantly lying in wait to attack Muhammad and his companions, it was impossible for the Muslims of Medina to devote themselves to their mission and bring all men and women under the sovereignty of one God. Nor could they settle down to their everyday work, the growing and harvesting of dates, the buying and selling of wares. How would it ever be possible under these conditions to become free from hunger and poverty? So the blessed prophet and his companions once again had to go on an expedition to warn the tribes of Muharrib and Ghatafan, who had been causing constant trouble for the Muslims in Medina. However, as soon as these tribal chiefs saw Muhammad and his forces marching towards them, they turned tail and fled. There was nothing else for the blessed prophet to do but return to Medina. As night was falling, they climbed through a narrow path in the hills. Here, Muhammad stopped and pointed to a spot further down. He gave instructions to collect firewood, set up the tents, and prepare a meal. Turning to Amr bin Yasir, a muhajir, and Abbas bin Bishr, and Ansar. He asked them if they would mount guard over the mouth of the pass in case an enemy should appear. Amar and Abbas chose a spot where they could watch over the pass and still be in sight of the camp. Abbas had brought with him his own special treasure, a small gazelle skin parchment upon which he had copied his favorite surah. He had been trying to learn it by heart when the command had been given to leave Medina. Had he lost it? No, it was still safely tucked in his pouch. A bath turned to his companion. Brother, let us divide the night into two parts. One of us stands guard against the first part and the other for the second. Agreed? Do you want a guard for the first or the second part of the night? Amar was stretching himself out and arranging his cloak. Well, I'm awfully sleepy right now, brother, and wouldn't be much good for anything. Let me sleep during the first half, and I'll keep watch during the second. The second half is harder, commented Abad. No matter, I intend doing the prayer. That will keep me awake. Now, one of the enemy had been tracking down the blessed prophet's party, and at that instant was lurking about in the shadows not far from the two guards. He was furious with the Muslims. His wife had tried to bring harm to them, and as a result had been killed in the skirmish that followed. He had sworn that he would take vengeance by killing one of Muhammad's companions. As he approached, Abbas was just standing up to pray. He began reading his favorite surah by the dim light of the campfire below, and as he read, the prayer rose to Allah, and he became overwhelmed by the beauty of the verses, and filled with a feeling of faith and worship so strong that in the moments that followed, he hardly realized what was happening. He is the Lord of the two Easts and Lord of the two Wests. Then which of the favors of your Lord will ye deny? The enemy's eyes lit up. What a perfect target he makes her. He chuckled, and carefully fitting an arrow to his bow, he took aim and shot. The arrow struck a bath in the side. He pulled it out, tossed it beside him, and continued reading. Yes,
Of him seeks its need, every creature in the heavens and on earth. Every day in new splendor doth he shine. Then which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? The Ratafani cursed, took aim and shot again. The arrow struck a bat in the leg. He reached down, pulled it out, and continued, Is there any reward for good other than good? Then which of the favors of your Lord will ye deny? When the third arrow struck and blood began flowing from Abad's wounds, he concluded the prayer, <laughs> Blessed be the name of thy Lord, full of majesty, bounty, and honor. Abad bowed, prostrated himself, said salam, and finished his prayer. Only then did he wake up his companion. The Ratafani, thinking that the guard had finally been fatally wounded, jumped up to take a look. Two of them, and both alive? He swore at his failure, and knowing he might get caught, ran off. Amar rubbed his eyes and stared at his companion. Good heavens, why didn't you wake me the first time you were hit? He felt terrible that he had slept through the whole occurrence and hastily made bandages for Abad's wounds. Abad smiled and reassured him. It's all right, Amma, really. I was in such a state of joy and worship that actually I hardly felt the arrows. I just kept plucking them out and going on with the surah. Well, by the third arrow, I had finished the surah, and then the prayer, and I thought I'd better wake you up. I could have continued even, but what if I had been killed? A dead guard is of no use to anyone, and he's a danger to the camp. I couldn't have let the blessed prophet down, you know. Ahmad laughed and embraced his friend.